Hello, it's Caroline at For the Love of Crochet, and today I have a little bit of story time, a little bit of a tutorial, and yeah, I think that's it. Um, I, As you can tell, I'm in my kitchen. I got my living room. You see where that light comes in? I gotta get that covered. I still haven't done that whip. Okay, so for today's video, I have been watching Little Drops of Wonderful Alley and Crochet Luna, they're doing this, um, oh, what is it called? Make Along, Dodgy Bag Make Along this year. I think this is third year in the making and that is to just make your own bag just to get sewing and not to worry about all the little tidbits and uh, perfectness of trying to make and create this bag. And so for a little bit of story time, um, my mother passed away in 2018. And this was one of the last things that she gave me, which is this little tiny sewing machine. I can pick it up with one hand, no problem. And um, the reason why she had bought it for me was because she had this colostomy bag. She had cancer and she she suffered through it for a good amount of time and I helped take care of her. But she was very um, self-conscious about that bag. And so I wanted to, well, she wanted me to make something for her. So she bought me this machine. Um, you can actually find this machine still. It, I found it at Hobby Lobby and I'll insert a picture Sorry, I'm shaking. <laughs> and um, so that was one of the last things she bought for me and it has been sitting and I've been seeing all these project bags and um, and then this make along that's been going on and Little Drops of Wonderful just really released a video and she reminded me that I wanted to make this. So I broke out that sewing machine. I took it down to my local sewing shop because I didn't even know if this thing still worked. Um, I did try to attempt to make that um, colostomy bag, but I ended up going to go get help because it was so bad. <laughs> I've never operated a machine. And a friend of mine helped me and she fixed it. And, and then so I had made, a, or I had her make three bags for me and I took it to my mom. However, um, like I said, I'm interested and excited to share with you this tutorial. I made a great bag. I got a lot of great positive feedback and I'm just so excited to share it. So um, you're gonna need some fabric, some scissors, a ruler. I mean, I even cut up some jeans right here. I have been going project bag crazy. You can see my girl, my golden girl back there. So welcome to my house and uh, we'll get started on this tutorial. Okay, so here we have my project bag. I've got the backpack, I've got the two tabs and it is a drawstring so I can put it on. No problem. So that is my bag that I made. This was my first sewing project. This, I wanted to compare it with my son's. This is his, and his is from Jiu Jitsu, and he takes this to Jiu Jitsu. So his is just about an inch longer. So you could get a little bit bigger. In fact, someone had mentioned to me to make it, actually my son said, you should make it a little bigger. I wonder why, because his is a little bigger. And so yes, this is his. His straps are very long. Mine are not. So that's true. If you wanted to like hold them, you know, you depending how long you want them. So, but mine is a backpack and I'm going to show you how to make that. Okay. So you're going to need some exterior fabrics and some inner fabrics or lining fabrics. And so for the exterior, and the interior, they're all gonna be the same. Now I used 17 by 15. So along here is 15, which is the width, and the length is 17. So you cut four pieces, two of your exterior and two of your interior. Also, just a little FYI, I got this at 
Michaels. Michaels. No, Joanne's. Joanne's. So this is one side is for ironing and the other side is for cutting. And so this was really cool tool. This is what I've been using and um, this is what I'm going to use to iron. So you're going to need your exterior and interior fabrics. And then for your drawstring, uh, you're going to need a casing. These are a little bit shorter. So since my exterior and interior are 17 by 15, I made these 14 inches long for the width. And then uh, the, the width is going to be three inches because we're gonna end up folding it in half to encase our rope. Okay, so you'll need two of those. Then you're going to cut out two three by threes of your interior fabric if you wanna have that contrast. So here I used my exterior, but for my interior, I used this. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough fabric, so I'm, I'm sticking with the exterior, so it's all gonna be uniform. However, these little are going to be my tabs for my backpack. So we're gonna fold those up and sew them, and they will eventually be our tabs on our bag. All right, so let's get started on ironing. Okay, so here I'm going to fold this over just about a quarter of an inch, or I don't know what this is. Can you zoom in? I'm just folding it over just a little teeny bit, and then I'm gonna fold it over again to hide it. And then I'll iron it. So my iron's not hot enough yet. Okay, so I ironed this side. Now I'm going to iron all four sides. So you're gonna iron all of those and that is so that we can sew them. So go ahead and iron your four, I should say, your four, what do I, I mean two pieces. <laughs> iron your two pieces, fold them over two times and we'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, so before we go to the sewing machine, I forgot we need to iron our two little tabs. So you're going to fold it in half. Press, fold it in half. Again, these are three by three squares. And then open it up and then fold it to the ironing uh, crease and then you're going to iron again and then fold it back over and iron again this will just make it easier for sewing. Okay, now we're ready to go to the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm gonna take my first piece, line it up, and I'm not, um, well, I'm not lining it up with my thing here. I'm just kind of keeping it, actually, I should put it more to this side. Okay, so I'm gonna put that little, what is that, sewing line right there. Got my needle down, and this machine's a little loud, so I may mute it. Okay, and then rather than pulling it out and stopping, I just keep going because, so I'm gonna lift the pedal, get ready for my next one, put that pedal down, and that saves thread 
and for me stopping and cutting every little piece. So I'm gonna keep going. Okay, and then same thing with this one. They're not being sewn together. I'm just gonna continue sewing and then I'll cut it all at the end. So now I'll lift my petal, make sure my needle's out. So rather than doing this every time, I can just snip them and they're all one side is done. And I'll do the same to the other side. needs to be cut. That was my beginning thread. We'll get our, my other casing lined up. And then I'm gonna do two, two rows just to make it better. Actually, no, I think I'll just leave it. Hmm. Nope, I'm gonna do it. So now I'll just cut them. Okay, so now I have all my pieces. We're gonna go back to the ironing board to iron this half like that. And then we'll be ready to sew the rest of the bag. Okay, so I'm gonna take those casing pieces after I sewed them and now I'm going to iron them in half. Once the, the people over there at the, my local sewing shop showed me how to do this, I came home and just kept going because I'm a learner that I, gotta, I, got to, I have to do it a few times. I need to make sure I practice because otherwise I'll forget. So here I have my two pieces. Now what we're going to do is your exterior, is going to be facing up and your casing. I would like it to be a different color, but unfortunately it's going to be the same because uh, I ran out of fabric. And then you put your, make sure, if you have a picture, make sure it's facing correctly. Uh, so here I have bikes that need to be facing correctly. So I'm going to turn this upside down. Line them up. Now, when you're sewing it on the sewing machine, it's a quarter inch seam all the way around and you don't want to sew your, what is this? The casing. So you need to make sure you're not going over because then your rope won't fit. So I'm gonna pin this to keep everything lined up. I 
I know in some sewing um, tutorials they have these little clips. I would much rather use clips, but this is this was what was in my sewing box. I also have my mother's sewing box, which is very cherished and it has some of her stuff in it. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one. Now I'm gonna do the second one. Again, make sure your fabric, if you have a print that needs to be facing a certain way, that it's facing a certain way. Hmm, so put that there. And then this fabric goes upside down. Make sure your print is right side up. Is it right side up? The hardest part for me was cutting these fabrics to um, just these, this, anything. I just measuring and cutting was difficult for me. Pins. Okay, so let's take a look. So see, I have my exterior is facing up, this picture is facing down, and notice when I'm sewing all the way around that this is safe from being sewn over. So we're gonna take these two pieces to the sewing machine and just sew here to connect our two pieces, our interior and our exterior. Okay, so I already, since my machine is not one of those fancy machines that has this little measuring plate here that tells you if it has a quarter inch or half inch and then you just keep your fabric lined up. So I stuck a piece of tape for this particular pattern, which is I think quarter of an inch or half an inch. Okay, so I have this tape here that I'm using for my gauge for not to go over that. Put my clamp down, scoot it to my tape, and let's give it a sew. Also, this is a great machine because this foot keeps you from getting any of these things caught in there as well as any fingers getting sewn. I, um, I don't know if it's supposed to be a kid a <laughs> kid sewing machine, but it is a Janome. Okay, now you can hit this button to go backwards and I, I it's supposed to like lock your thread, but I don't do it very often. So I'm gonna lift my pedal, pull it out, and you're going to see that we've connected our two fabrics together. So here is the exterior and here's gonna be our casing, here's our interior. And they line up, so it's gonna be great. All right, so I'm gonna give this a press on the iron to, to, to iron this 
away from the, and then iron this down. So when we sew it all together, it, it's nice and flat. Okay, so we're gonna do that to the second piece and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so now that we ironed both pieces, you're going to measure with your handy dandy ruler, two and a half inches from the bottom and that is where we're gonna place our loops. So let's see, one, two, two and a half. Two and a half right in the middle so you put it in two and a half and then you pin it but it's very hard to go through that much fabric okay so the the opening part is over here we're gonna sew that on all by itself right now and I'm gonna do the other side same distance at the two and a half mark. Let me see if there's a better picture on this side. Maybe, I don't know. One, two and a half. Okay, so let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, so it's very hard for me to start sewing without taking that thing, that needle out. So I'm just going to take it out, place my clamp down, and then sew just this bit. And then I'm gonna go backwards. And then that's it. I'm going to do that to the other side. Ready? Okay, so now I have this side, which I sewed these tabs to. Now I'm going to place them on top of each other and pin all the way around. Make sure they're lined up so that you don't sew over your, what is that? Your casing or your tabs that you have for your backpack. So you wanna make sure you stay within that quarter inch or half an inch, inch half inch, half inch, half inch. Okay, so I'm gonna pin all the way around. Wait, you don't wanna see all of this. Make sure it's lined up. My pressing didn't go that well. Okay, so there we go, they're lined up. I don't have the best cutting. One slightly over here, or maybe it's just turned in. So I'm going to pin all the way around. Okay, I pinned all the way around, but since this is my inner fabric, I put a crisscross here because I need to turn it inside out. So this part is not going to get sewn, but the rest of it, I'm just going to sew all the way around. So I'll show you as I get started, but then I will turn off the camera because it's quite a long bit. <laughs> Okay, so there is my crisscross, so I'm just gonna start a little bit after that. This is my inner fabric. Remember, this is my tape with half inch seams, so I'm not gonna go over. 
Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way around and when I have that opening, I'll get back to you. Okay, so I just finished sewing and I have this little opening here in the lining part. So I'm going to turn it inside out. Hopefully I did those tabs right this time. I'll trim all these. I didn't. I've had so many technical difficulties, but okay, yeah, wrong way. Okay, so see how they're sewn together? Now all you do is, yay, my tabs are on the outside. So I gotta make sure this one stays on the outside as well. So there's my tabs, and this lining is gonna get in there, but I have to sew up that little opening part. Here it is. Okay, so I may I have that opening here. I went ahead and pressed it so that when I sew it, it's nice, and I'm just going to get as quite as close as I can to the edge. And then I'll do a little back. Okay, lift my foot. Needle is up. And the magic. Okay, so now I'm going to put the inside inside and the exterior outside but I can't <laughs> because I'm on camera all right I have my tabs ready for my ropes. I have my opening here for my rope as well on both sides. Now I am going to give it another press and to finish it off even more, once you press it, if you give it a stitch all the way around, it will look even better and your lining will stay attached. So my sewing machine has this lovely this is one detail that it does have. It doesn't self needle your thread, doesn't have a little cutter, doesn't have the measuring, but it does have this so that I can go in here and give it a little stitch all the way around for a finishing touch. So I'm gonna give it a press and then give it a stitch. Okay, so I've given it a press all the way around. I'm going to insert it so close and then put my foot down and I'm gonna go all around. Here's where I began, so I'm about to finish. Then I'll do a little back. Then I'll lift up, needles out. Give it a trim. And I don't know if you can see my fancy stitching. Can you see that? My stitch? It's so close. It's practically on the line. So here is a lovely backpack bag. I only pressed the top, so I didn't get to press the rest of it. 
but I'm going to insert the rope and get back to you after that. I didn't have any rope that was thick like my son's or the one that I got from the sewing store. So I found this at Dollar Tree, so I'm gonna use this to put it in, but you would want something larger. This is great for just doing the drawstring, but for the backpack, I would suggest getting the thicker kind. Okay, so I'm, I know some people use the safety pin to pull it through. I'm gonna use tape and that has been working for me. This, uh, you need to have painter's tape in your sewing box because I'm using it for my sewing machine and for this. Okay, almost there. Making sure there's no sticky parts that's gonna stick. Then I got a nice little opening. So if you get this thicker one, you definitely need to make sure your casing is large enough to hold whatever rope you're gonna use. So I just kind of do this and I get it all the way down. Almost there. Gravity helps, but I'm standing. Okay, so I got one side in and I went through both sides. I made it super long this time so that way we can match my sons a little better. Now I'm gonna go get another string and I'm gonna go through this side so that I'll have tabs on both sides, or um, strings on both sides. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I made this super long, and I think it's too long, especially since this one I cut much shorter. So I'm going to tidy up the, the length, and well, let me just show you how I do this. See how I use my tape? So one goes in, one goes out, and then give it a knot. So then it becomes a bag. But I'm gonna get this one shorter. So here is the drawstring bag. I made the straps long, but of course you can um, make them smaller. And you do want to go with a thicker rope than the one I found at Dollar Tree. So there you go. Here is the drawstring bag, my lovely lining, and the inside fabric. How'd I do? <laughs> Are you going to make one? And um, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> I made this, and I made this. And I made this, and I made this too, and this also. Woohoo!